The world is a fascinating place. It's not simple. There's a lot of complexity, nuance, and enigma to our crazy world. These are 20 most mysterious places scientists still can't explain. Number 20. Bull Rock Bull Rock Island with the world-famous Bull Rock is just 4 kilometers or almost 2.5 miles from Dursey Island and 5.5 miles from County Cork in Ireland. Seems pretty close to everything, right? But nobody in the world can visit this place, and here's why. It's an isolated tourist attraction on a sea transit at the entrance to the Kenmare River on the tip of the Barra Peninsula. The only way to get there is by boat, and it's a pretty dangerous attraction to visit on your own, which is why tour groups are advised. Although, warnings aside, it is still an incredible and worthwhile attraction if you happen to be in the area. The rock is as pretty as a picture with its purple siltstone and green sandstone surface, and it has a cool tunnel-like passage right through it that people describe as the gateway to the underworld. What you'll also find quite interesting and somewhat confusing about this attraction is that people used to live there. Stone structures have been built into the dramatic rocky cliffs, and there's also a lighthouse, which was built in 1889. Between 1901 and 1991, up to seven men lived and worked in the lighthouse before it became fully automatic. You're not able to enter the lighthouse, but the occasional maintenance worker will visit to keep it in tip-top shape for people to view from a distance. Like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the odd topic. Nobody in the world can visit this place, and here's why. Because this place is Hegra. It was built by a pre-Islamic society in Saudi Arabia. Hegra was the second city of the Nabataean Kingdom and is situated deep in the epicenter of the hot desert, making it unsafe for most people to get to. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag oddtopic. Number 19. Lake Natron in Tanzania Lakes are supposed to be fun vacation destinations where you take the kids for a dip, but you definitely wouldn't be visiting Lake Natron in Tanzania with your family. This lake might look serene, but that's before you see the stone-like carcasses of dozens of animals littered around its outer edges. Unlike most other lakes, this one has alkaline water with a pH as high as 10.5. That makes the water so caustic that animals that haven't adapted to it can have their eyes and skin burnt off. Scientists believe that the high alkaline content in the water comes from minerals like sodium carbonate that trickle down from surrounding hills and flow into the lake. It's easy to assume that you'll turn to stone and die if you step foot in this lake, so it must be a desolate location. But it's actually not. It supports an ecosystem of wetland birds like flamingos and has salt marshes, algae, and freshwater wetlands. Every breeding season, about two million lesser flamingos descend upon the area and build their nests on the small islands that form in the lake during the dry season. This lake's uniqueness makes it worthwhile for us to protect it, but there's actually a chance it might not exist as we know it for much longer. There are plans in the pipeline for a hydroelectric power plant to be installed on the Iwaso and Go River, which is the primary river feeding Lake Natron. Number 18. Pink Sand Beaches Take a moment to picture a beach in your head. What comes to mind? Turquoise water bordered by white sand? Maybe a few palm trees? But did pink sand ever cross your mind? Well, believe it or not, some countries are fortunate to have pink sand beaches, and they are as incredible as they sound. They might look photoshopped, but the rose to coral-colored sand is actually legitimate, and it has been formed by single-celled microorganisms with pink shells washing up on the beach and mixing with what would have once been white sand. So you end up with pink sand. Such a phenomenon phenomenon is definitely rare, but it's not super rare because there are over a dozen pink sand beaches around the world with a combination of red coral and white sand. The single-celled crustaceans contributing to these pink paradises are called foraminifera, and they are found throughout the ocean. They mostly live on the underside of coral reefs, in caves, and on the seabed. When they die, the continuous movement of the ocean causes their shells to be ground into tiny particles, which then wash ashore and mix with the sand granules. That's why you'll likely never find a consistent pink coloring. 
Number 17. Stonehenge in England You didn't think we'd talk about the most mysterious places without mentioning Stonehenge, did you? There's a giant question mark over that place. Stonehenge is a prehistoric stone circle monument 8 miles north of Salisbury, Wiltshire on Salisbury Plain. It was believed to have been built in six stages from 3000 to 1520 BCE, which fell between the Neolithic period and the Bronze Age. We don't have any solid evidence about what Stonehenge was actually for, but many experts think it was probably some kind of religious site or an expression of power. Because it aligns with the sun, it's likely that it was also used for farmers to work out their farming calendars and possibly even to observe the sun and moon. But there are plenty of other theories about what it was used for. For example, some people think it was erected as a monument to our ancestors, separated from the living, and possibly a healing center. But whatever the reason, modern-day druids gather there each year for the midsummer sunrise, and it'll likely forever be a popular attraction with visitors all around the world. Number 16. Eternal Flames Falls in New York State Anyone with even a basic level of education knows that fire and water don't mix. But there's one natural attraction that might have you questioning that theory. The Eternal Flames Falls in Chestnut Ridge County Park, south of Buffalo in New York State. This hidden attraction is truly something remarkable, and you'll be doing a double take when you see it for yourself. It's a waterfall with what looks like a fire in it that never goes out. What's even more interesting is that there doesn't appear to be a scientific explanation for it. If you've never heard of Eternal Flames Falls before, you might assume it's a little bit of light trickery, or maybe there's a tour guide who lights it daily to get some kicks out of seeing the shock on tourists' faces. But there's no trickery here. It's a real fire, and it's a a real waterfall. So what's the most likely explanation for it? Well, it's all about geology. This 30-inch tall fire manages to keep burning by consuming around 2 pounds of gas from a natural pocket around 1,312 feet deep. Once in a while, the flame does go out, but it's quickly lit again. According to local legends, Native Americans first lit the fire hundreds of years ago. Number 15. Ain Dara Temple in Syria The Ain Dara Temple near Ain Dara in Afrin, Syria is an Iron Age temple that looks eerily similar to Solomon's temple described in the Hebrew Bible. It was built on a terrace called the Acropolis of the Tell and overlooks the Afrin Valley. While it allegedly dates back from 1300 BC to 740 BC, modern day explorers didn't discover it until they found a colossal basalt lion in 1955. At that point, excavations got underway to uncover the rest of it, and what they discovered was incredible. They believe it had been built in three phases and had a range of wonderful features like sculptures depicting sphinxes and lions. Huge footprints had also been carved into the floor, but it's not known whether they were animals, humans, or giants. We also don't know to whom the temple is dedicated. It might have been an oracle temple between the Syrian desert and the Mediterranean Sea, or it might have been devoted to the goddess of fertility, Ishtar. Sadly, the Ain Dara so many people came to love is no longer what it used to be. In early 2018, around 60% of the temple was reduced to rubble by Turkish Air Force jets during the Afrin Offensive. Number 14. Door to Hell in Turkmenistan Door to Hell doesn't really sound like a very inviting tourist attraction, but this unusual site is probably worth visiting in my opinion. Door to Hell, or Gates of Hell as it's also known, is the Darvaza gas crater near Darvaza in Turkmenistan. It's the name given to a burning natural gas field that collapsed into a cavern. So basically, it's a giant hole of fire spanning one and a third acres with a 226 foot diameter and 98 foot depth. The fiery hole is in the middle of the Karakum Desert and was thought to have come to exist after being set on fire by Soviet geologists. One geologist said that Soviet engineers identified the site in 1971 and thought it might be a good oil field site. They set up a drilling rig to assess the oil quantity but ended up discovering a natural gas pocket. The drilling rig collapsed into a crater and was buried. Fortunately, there were no casualties. 
Thinking that poisonous gas could be released into nearby towns, those engineers thought burning the gas off would be a good idea. They estimated that it would burn off in a few weeks, but it's now been over 50 years. That's awkward. Today, it's a popular tourist attraction, and people also love to visit for a wild desert camping experience. Number 13. Great Blue Hole in Belize if you're a passionate scuba diver, you've probably heard about the Great Blue Hole off the coast of Belize. It's a massive marine sinkhole near the middle of Lighthouse Reef, which is a tiny atoll about 43 miles from Belize City and the mainland. The hole itself is not tiny, though. It's about 1,043 feet across, 407 feet deep, and has a surface area of around 760,500 square feet. According to experts, it was formed over multiple episodes of quaternary glaciation, which happened when sea levels were much lower than they are today. Scientists have always been curious about how old the Great Blue Hole is, and they managed to find the answers they were looking for when they analyzed stalactites found within it. As it turns out, this huge hole started forming 153,000 years ago, then again 66,000 years ago, six years after that, then 15,000 years ago. The Great Blue Hole now forms part of the Belize Barrier Reef Reserve System and is an FLOHA World Heritage Site. In 2018, two submarines actually entered it to map its interior. They were so close to being able to complete a full 3D map, but they also made other discoveries while there. Not only did they find a layer of hydrogen sulfide about 300 feet down, but they also found the bodies of two divers. At least three have gone missing while diving in this marine sinkhole. Number 12. Easter Island in Chile We've got so many small islands scattered around the world, so why is Easter Island in the Southeast Pacific Ocean so famous and mind-boggling? Well, aside from being at the southeasternmost point of the Polynesian Triangle in Oceania, it also has nearly 1,000 statues scattered all over it, known as Maui. These statues were created by early Rapa Nui people and have become famous, so much so that Easter Island is now a World Heritage Site. Most of the island falls within the protective border of the Rapa Nui National Park. There's still so much we don't know about Easter Island. We can't be sure about when its Polynesian inhabitants first arrived. Some researchers say that it was around the year 800, but later data produced in 2007 shows that it might have been the year 1200. When Europeans arrived in 1722, the population sat at up to 3,000, but because they brought diseases with them and due to Peruvian slave raiding of the 1860s and emigration, the population was as low as 111 native inhabitants by 1877. As of 2017, there were 7,750 people People living on Easter Island, and it remains as one of the most remote inhabited islands in the world. Number 11. Kawaijen Volcano in Indonesia Kawaijen Volcano on the island of Java in Indonesia is probably unlike any volcano you would have seen before, and for two very good reasons. The first reason is that it has an active volcanic crater which emits hot and flammable sulfurous gases. As they enter the oxygen-rich atmosphere, they ignite and burn with incredible blue flames. Can you imagine how amazing that looks at night? The flames are actually quite hard to see during the day, but they look like a continuous lightning strike once night falls. But a volcano that looks like it has blue lava isn't even the coolest thing about this Kawaijen volcano complex. There's also a 0.6 mile wide caldera lake which is filled with striking turquoise blue water. The high concentration of dissolved metals plus the extreme acidity gives it that incredible color. For obvious reasons, it's known as the most highly acidic lake in the world, with a pH level as low as as 0.5. This part of the world was actually quite underrated for a long time. It wasn't until National Geographic mentioned the electric blue flames that tourists started to descend on the area in huge numbers. Now, companies are offering midnight hiking tours for people to reach the rim of the crater and see the blue flames in all their glory. Number 10. The Nazca Lines in Peru Scientists are pretty good at solving some of the world's greatest mysteries, but there's one in Peru that they haven't quite been able to get to the bottom of. The Nazca Lines 
The Nazca lines are geometric designs and distinct shapes of animals like spiders and monkeys that have been etched into the desert of southern Peru. The white lines stand out on the tan and rust red earth, and they can be found across an incredible distance. In total, you can spot over 800 straight lines, 70 animals and plants, and about 300 geometric designs about 200 miles southeast of Lima from the sky. Some of the straight lines run for distances of up to 30 miles. Interestingly, we didn't even notice these lines were there until the 1930s, when commercial planes started flying over Peru. Most of them were impossible to see from the ground level. Many people have researched the Nazca lines over the years, but perhaps few are as dedicated to getting answers as Maria Reich. She was aptly referred to as the Lady of the Lines and spent four decades developing theories about why they were there. She formed a pretty strong case for them to have astronomical and calendrical purposes and even received a National Geographic grant for her research. Maria was so dedicated that she chose to live in a small home near the desert just to protect them from reckless visitors. Number 9. Confluence of Rhone and Arve Rivers in Geneva when you put one liquid into another, you usually see them mixing right away. But something altogether different happens at La Junction in Geneva, which is where Rhone and Arve rivers join to create one large river. At a viewpoint next to the water and on the Viaduct de la Junction bridge above it, you can see how the two rivers are quite different in color and seem to remain separated before eventually merging. The Rhone is one of Europe's major rivers, which rises in Switzerland and runs from there all the way to southeastern France. The Arve River gets its water from glaciers of the Chamonix Valley and flows northwest into the Rhone on Geneva's west side. It becomes immediately apparent where they meet that there's a much higher level of silt in the Rhone, leading to that unique contrast between the two bodies of water. Eventually, you'll see the silt dropping to the bottom and the waters are able to come together to form a different colored river. It's like a real-life science experiment. Number 8. Lake Hillier in Australia You've learned about pink sand beaches and how they exist, but what about pink lakes? They also exist, shockingly. Lake Hillier in Western Australia is a bubblegum pink colored lake off the southern coast. It's located on Middle Island, surrounded by sand and vegetation, and is 1,968 feet long and 820 feet wide. It's also eight times saltier than the ocean. Experts have long been confused about why on earth this lake is bright pink when pretty much every other body of water is nowhere near that kind of color. They've managed to come up with a few sound theories. One of those theories was that there's a type of seaweed in there called Dunaliella, which is rich in carotenoids. A combination of sunlight, high temperatures, and high salinity might cause the algae to release pigment, which can color the lake. They also wondered whether it was due to microorganisms living and growing in the salt crust, although we've managed to develop some more detailed theories in more recent years. Scott Teig from the University of Vermont in Burlington founded the Extreme Microbiome Project and teamed up with a microbial genomics company in Australia to collect water and sediment samples. They sequenced all the DNA and found about 500 extremophiles, which are organisms like bacteria, viruses, and algae, which thrive in extreme environments. Some were also colorful, which might explain the color of the lake. Number 7. Reshat Structure in Northwest Africa the Rishat structure in West Central Mauritania, Northwest Africa is a circular geological feature you can see near Udane in the Adrar Plateau of the Sahara. It's described as a geological dome about 25 miles in diameter with sedimentary rocks exposed in layers, making them look like rings. It dates back to the late Proterozoic Age, but all different layers date back to various times. It's really hard to describe this elliptical dome without seeing it for yourself, but you can take our word for it that it's something pretty cool. The exposed rock in the dome is sedimentary, while the edges consist of Ordovician sandstone. The sedimentary rocks also dip outward at a 20-degree angle, and there are various layers of quartzite with siliceous breccia sedimentary rock spanning 19 miles in the very center. It's basically a geologist's paradise. Exposed within the very center of the reshot structure, you'll also spot both in 
intrusive and extrusive igneous rocks like gabbros, kimberlites, rhyolitic volcanic rocks, and carbonatites. This unique rocky structure was first described in the late 1930s and early 1940s, with geologists calling it a highly symmetrical and deeply eroded geologic dome. It's so massive that you can see it from space. Number 6. Spotted Lake in British Columbia, Canada there's really nothing out of the ordinary about Spotted Lake, northwest of a Soyuz in British Columbia's eastern Similkameen Valley. At least not during winter and spring. It looks like any other body of water that Canadians might visit for a spot of fishing. But there's a reason it's called Spotted Lake. And that's because when the water starts to evaporate in summer, hundreds of large, briny, yellow, green, and blue pools of water are left behind. The lake ends up looking like a patch of polka dots, hence the name Spotted Lake. These briny pools exist due to high concentrations of minerals like magnesium sulfate, calcium, and sodium sulfate, which enter the water from surrounding hills. The concentration of each mineral can dictate the color of the dots once the rest of the lake evaporates. Okanagan Nation indigenous people have considered Spotted Lake a sacred place for hundreds of years, believing that each of the circles had different medicinal and healing properties. Before it was known as Spotted Lake, the First Nations of the Okanagan Valley called it Klilik. The land surrounding the lake used to be private. However, it was acquired for use by the Okanagan Nation in 2001, protecting it from development and ensuring it could remain an environmental and cultural site. Number 5. The Donakil Depression in Ethiopia the Donakil Depression sounds like some kind of health condition, but it's actually a geological basin in Ethiopia that came to exist through the deviation of three tectonic plates in the Horn of Africa. The Donakil Depression spans 124 miles by 31 miles in the north of the Afar region and is at a triple junction of three plates that developed when Africa and Asia moved apart. This movement caused volcanic activity and rifting. The sea, erosion, and the rising and falling of the ground have all contributed to the depression's formation. Sure, the depression itself is pretty interesting to look at, but that's not all that has scientists curious. The area is sometimes described as the Cradle of Humanity, and it's where the famous fossil called Lucy was found, which is thought to be about 3.2 million years old. Since then, many other ancient hominin fossils have been found, making paleontologists believe that the human species first evolved here. In terms of year-round temperatures, the Donakil Depression is the hottest place on Earth. Even though it's also one of the lowest parts of the planet at 330 feet below sea level, it still averages daily temperatures of around 94 degrees Fahrenheit or 34.4 degrees Celsius. Number 4. Papakolea Beach in Hawaii you're probably still wrapping your head around the fact that we have pink sand beaches, but what if I was to tell you that we also have green sand beaches? Papakolea Beach near South Point in Hawaii is one of four green sand beaches in the world. The others are found in Guam, the Galapagos Islands, and Norway. According to experts, the green coloring comes from olivine sand, which has been eroded out of a volcanic cone in the area. The beach is positioned in a bay half encircled by a tuff ring called Pu'u Mahana, which formed about 49,000 years ago. Tuff rings consist of volcanic ashes, and this one in particular contains a silicate material consisting of iron and magnesium known as olivine. This mineral is actually quite common in lava and is one of the first forming crystals when magma cools. In Hawaii, it's referred to as the Hawaiian diamond and is called peridot when it's found to be of gem quality. Now, a green beach is, of course, going to be a tourist attraction, so you might be wondering how you can reach it. Papakolea Beach is about three miles east of Kale and is encompassed by pasture lands. You can only legally access it by foot via rugged paths. The Department of Hawaiian Homelands has been attempting to restrict vehicular access since 2016. Number 3. Stone Spheres in Costa Rica if you pay a visit to Costa Rica, you might see a few pamphlets mentioning the stone spheres or bolas de piedra, which means stone balls. Some stones might not seem like a mega tourist attraction, but these are. There are over 300 rounded stones in Palmar Sur that range in size from just a few inches to around 6.6 .6 feet in diameter. Some are thought to weigh as much as 15 tons.
All the rounded stones appear to be gabbro, but some are also sandstone and limestone. Experts think they may have been made by hammering natural boulders using other rocks and then polishing them with sand. Many of them are placed in lines leading up to chief's houses, but no one actually knows their true significance. What we do know is that they've been attributed to the now extinct Dekeys culture and that they might represent solar systems or sun and moon phasing. It's also believed that they were first created around the year 600, and some potentially before the Spanish conquest but after the year 1000. Number 2. Salar de Ayuni in Bolivia The Salar de Ayuni in southwest Bolivia might look familiar to you. If it does, you might have seen it in Star Wars, The Last Jedi, Salt and Fire, and The Unseen, just to name a few. Salar de Ayuni is the largest salt flat in the world, spanning 3,900 square miles in Potosi, southwest Bolivia. It sits near the crest of the Andes at an incredible 11,995 feet above sea level. Shockingly, there are only average elevation variations of about one meter across the entire salt flats. That's truly taken the term flat to a whole new level. Salar de Ayuni was created when prehistoric lakes evaporated over time about 40,000 years ago. Now, it's just one big, wide area covered in salt crust with a pool of lithium-rich brine. Because it's such a large area with clear skies and flatness, it's a perfect spot for experts to calibrate the altimeters of our Earth observation satellites. But it doesn't look white, crusty, and salty all year round. Sometimes, when it rains, it becomes the world's largest mirror at 80 miles across. As you might imagine, it's a pretty popular tourist destination, so many hotels have been built around the area. There's a general lack of building materials, so many of them have walls and roofs built with salt blocks directly from Salar de Ayuni. Number 1. The Great Pyramid of Giza there's so much left to be discovered about the Great Pyramid of Giza. That's probably one of the reasons why it's the oldest of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The Great Pyramid of Giza is the largest Egyptian pyramid and was built in the 26th century BC over about 27 years. It's also the tomb of 4th Dynasty Pharaoh Khufu. It used to stand at 481 feet tall and remained the tallest human-made structure in the world for over 3,800 years. However, most of the white limestone casing was removed, shrinking it down to a little over 450 feet. What we see today is actually the core structure of the pyramid rather than the finished product. Your guess is as good as mine regarding how they built it, especially without machinery. They would have needed to quarry about 2.3 million blocks, weighing 6 million tons. They were then bound with mortar. Limestone came from the nearby Giza Plateau, and other blocks, like white limestone and granite blocks, were brought in by boat down the Nile. The white limestone came from Tura to Kaysa and the granite blocks came from Aswan to form the king's chamber. So far, we know of three chambers inside the pyramid, but we've still got no idea about the exact construction techniques or what else could be inside. Even though we like to think that we're pretty knowledgeable as a species and can go anywhere we please, we actually have way more limitations and knowledge gaps than we think. Have you ever been to any of these places? Which one would you add to your must-visit list? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!